I want to talk about one of the most difficult words in the English language, and it's the word put. Three letters, looks very easy, and it just means to move something from one place to another, doesn't it? You know, put the book on the table, put the gun down. Ah, well that's the beginning of the things it might mean, but it means lots of other things as well. Um, put down, yes, put the book down on the table. Put the dog down. Oh, that means to kill. Uh, put down your ideas on paper means to write. Put somebody down means to denigrate them. To put it down to means to wrongly associate it with. So he put the pain down to indigestion. Uh, put by, that means to save. Uh, to put on, you can put on your shirt. But that doesn't mean like on your head, of course, does it? It means over you. So you, if you put on some clothes, you put them over you. Uh, put on an accent. And what about put off? Does that, does that mean take your clothes off? No, it doesn't. Put off somebody means to postpone it. To be put off means to take exception to it. And how about out? To put the cat out means to eject it. To put something out, to put a candle out, means to extinguish it. To be put out means to be upset by something. Ah, and how about up? You can put the picture up on the wall. That's like place, isn't it? But um, you can put up a fight. You can put up a friend. That means accommodate. And um, of course you can put up with somebody saying silly things on videos. So what we've got here is called a phrasal verb. We're adding a preposition after the verb put and it changes its meaning in a dozen different ways. And when I say a dozen, I probably mean two or three dozen. And lots and lots and lots of simple, simple English words are made extremely complicated by the addition of these prepositions. Here are a few other phrasal verbs, just to make you think. What about the word go? That means to move from one place to another, doesn't it? Um, to go to, to go away from. But to go out with, oh, that means something very different. And to go on, to go on reading, that means to continue. And what about, oh, go on with you? What about look? Look at something, like I'm looking at you. Yeah, OK, but what about look up to? Well, you could look up to the sky, but look up to a person, that means something very different. And look down on somebody, quite different. To look over something means to inspect it but to overlook something is a completely different meaning. What about stand? Stand by your bed is quite different from stand by your man. Oh dear. And you can see, you can see something by looking at it, but you can see through it. That means you can see that it isn't true, or you can see it through, which means you can continue with it and finish it. And that is just a tiny taste of the hundreds of phrasal verbs that there are in English. Mm -hmm. But do think about what difficulties those simple looking phrases have for the children you're teaching, because each one of those meanings has got to be taught, or more importantly, has got to be learnt.